discuss a god roll craft for the legendary sword the other half which is obtainable via days of eternity this is going to discuss what enhanced traits or perks you want to craft on the sword when you do get it um so there are two craftable swords in the game as you can see you've got half truths the other half they're both from days of eternity now one takes five patterns to get and the other half is only one the trade-off there is though the other half is far rarer than the other one right so this one obviously takes five so they're not the same neither because the perk combination that you can get on them is different so like for example a perk on this sword might be in column uh, two on this where it's whereas it's column one on this sword so there's differences right column two has a lot of different perks to column two on this one the other half is a far superior sword to the other one right i'll get that out of the way first this is a better sword i've looked at what perks you can get on half truths and this sword is better for pve as opposed to this one if you're playing solo and you want to get your damage up and stuff like that for damage purposes the other half's better and it's more accessible and just easier to use and everything um but as i said i understand this is going to be a rare sword but once you do get that one red body you can start a crafty so this is going to cover this particular sword not the other one so you need to first understand what type of sword you're crafting there are um different types of frames of swords not in, not including the class specific swords like crown splitter and the hunter one and the warlock one i'm not including those frames just your standard frames so you've got vortex frame adaptive frame right and then you've got caster frame caster frame is a ranged sword and it's based on the heavy attack that it does which is a projectile attack so you can use this and fire it at a boss that's far away the vortex frame sword is a spin to win style sword that's what it's based on right but the spin the, the spin to win attack costs more heavy ammo than what other heavy attacks cost for example adaptive frame style swords their heavy attack is an uppercut attack which is different and it does less damage than what a vortex frame attack would do but it consumes less ammo as well so there's a trade-off between the two so once you got that out of the way with the swords right so the other half is an adaptive style frame sword so you're gonna have an uppercut attack right so that's what it is so i'll go into it and show you what i've put on it so impact is a stat that you can change because of the enhanced intrinsic frame that you can put on it which is only impact that's the only frame you can put on so put on the uh, impact frame the other one doesn't give you nothing so make sure you put that on to get the increased impact you can actually change it even more with the first slot you've got jagged edge hungry edge horned edge stuff like that all this stuff some of it gives more ammo and whatnot but the best stat uh, or perk in slot is jagged edge right um you're going to get less ammo but doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things so jagged edge is best the next one you've got different guards so you've got enduring guard heavy guard balance guard you can see how it's affecting all the stats now a, a sword like this you don't need to spec for guard stuff like crown split is a really good sword that you can guard with and stuff but you wouldn't want to spec a sword like this for that style of play you want to spec it for damage and heavy recharge rate this stat right here you want your charge rate to be as high as you can so that you can keep doing it as much as possible so sword master's guard is the best stat the node to pick so you pick that now we come to the uh, the perks right so i went with relentless strikes whirlwind blade i picked the enhanced perks for science to see what they do and <clears throat> i've actually got tests of what they do at the end of the video so if you want to see that skip to where that where that part is so i can actually tell you what uh, standard whirlwind blade does as opposed to enhanced because there are differences but it's very subtle right um but anyways i'll tell you what the other perks it's got and why i didn't choose them so column one we have flash counter julius trance and eager edge so the reason why i didn't choose flash counter is because it's too situational it adds a debuff to the boss or an enemy which is very interesting the thing is it's very situational and you're losing damage whilst you're trying to proc this this perk it's too awkward to proc 
right? It's too much. You're losing damage. Whilst you're doing that, you could be doing light swings and then you're heavy. Light swings and you're heavy. So you're losing out on damage if you pick up this perk. So it's good, but it's not good enough, right? And you want a perk that works all the time or most of the time as opposed to working some of the time, right? So that's a no. Duelist Trance is a good perk, but it's focusing on ad clear. Because what it states is sword, sword final blows in grant increased recharge rate, which is good. But the thing is, um, it's final blows. So this isn't focusing on champs or bosses, which is what you saw. You want your sword to be able to do that in PvE for solo PvE purposes. You want it to be able to take down a boss quicker or a champ quicker. Right? Um as opposed to adds quicker because your sword is going to one shot an ad anyways like a thrall or something so you're not going to be able to get much usage out of Julie's trance there's a far better perk than this so i wouldn't go with that either and there's eager edge and obviously there's enhanced eager edge which everyone's losing their minds over now why didn't i go with that i'm a pve player and stuff like that you don't need to all right if you are speed running content then you need Eager Edge because you're competing for times. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably don't even know what I'm going on about, but there's a sub-community of players who compete with each other for times. The speedrunning raids, the speedrunning dungeons, solo speedrunning, stuff like that. Like the solo speedrun for Duality recently. I don't know what the time is of, of late, right? But when it first came out, people were speedrunning it with Eager Edge swords. Right, and that was the difference in times and stuff. But like 98% of the player base aren't speedrunning dungeons and raids for like times and really minute managing stuff. So you just want a good sword, right, to take down a boss. Uh, there's going to be a couple of speedruns probably going to kidnap me and lynch me for this, but you don't need it. They do, you don't. You're probably not speedrunning, they are. So you don't need to go Eager Edge, right? What I suggest you do instead is go Relentless Strikes because you're going to get so much more ammo because of it. It states land and free light attacks will gr grant you ammo. So for every free light hits, you get one ammo, per, uh, one ammo back. If you add that over a 60 mag sword, right, 60 energy sword, then that's a lot of ammo. That's a hell of a lot of ammo back. And that's going to help you on damage, damage phases for bosses. As I said, I've tested Enhanced Relentless Strikes, which is at the, near the end of the video. So if you want to know the difference between the two, you'll see that. So that's why I say go Relentless Strikes. All right? For your damage. This is a damage dealing sword. This I haven't crafted it for speedruns. Column 2. I went, I went with Whirlwind Blade, which gives you... Um, it gives you up to 10 stacks. So it stacks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10 for every light hit you do. Once you get to times 10, you get a 30% damage bonus to your, to your output for your sword. Right? So they nerfed Whirlwind Blade. It used to be 5 stack. Now it's 10. It was, they nerfed it a way, uh, quite a bit back, right? But Whirlwind Blade still the best sword perk, in my opinion. Because it just works on everything. A boss, a champ, it doesn't matter. And as I said, the enhanced version is slightly different, but very subtle. If you really wanted to, you could just craft Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade standard version. You wouldn't need enhanced. I'll tell you that straight up right now. I'll be honest with you. Just craft the standard variant. You don't need the enhanced traits. But if you want to go border, you need to make them enhanced traits. Other perks in column two, we have Frenzy, Repulsor Brace, Vorpal. Frenzy is good. It's a 15% damage flap flat bonus right the thing is that's not as good as whirlwind blade as i just previously mentioned whirlwind blade's going to do double the damage at max stacks so this isn't as good repulsive brace would be good on void debuff builds like void walker and stuff yes for staying alive i clear and stuff like that but again you don't really need this perk so i wouldn't choose it vorpal weapon is a 10 percent damage bonus which is nowhere near as good as whirlwind so you wouldn't pick that either so that's what I picked with, as I said, um, with the Eager Edge thing, right? It is a fun perk, I understand it, and it's got some utility. This is my solution to the problem. What you do is, is you keep a sword 
with Eager Edge, that isn't your good sword, so that you can play around with it, right? So I've got a half truth, say with Relentless Strikes, Eager Edge. I'm going to use this as, as my Eager Edge sword. Now, I understand Enhanced Eager Edge does a little bit more than standard. But again, I, I hung up my speedrunning boots years ago. I ain't speedrunning stuff like I used to. A little bit older than what I, what I used to be. So I ain't doing that. So I'm not fussed. But for you, for you younger players and stuff who are speedrunning stuff, it's more important to them. But for the most majority of player base, between like 20 to 40, that age range, those are the age range of players who watch me, they ain't speedrunning stuff like an 18 or 16 year old is. So they ain't going to use this as much as they would. Right, so um, if you still want Eager Edge, just keep it on another sword. Right, that's fine. Or craft two of these. If you want to craft two of these, one with Relentless, one with Eager Edge. Do it like that. Now discussing the origin trait, because the sword has an origin trait called Hot Swap. So it states, switching this weapon while you are damaged strongly increases its handling for a short duration. But for swords, it's different. Swords gain increased charge rate, guard resistance, and guard endurance instead. So that's useful, right? That, that is actually useful. The only problem is it doesn't last long, three or four seconds. But you can put on a helmet mod, right? It's seasonal based, that's the only thing. Uh, and it improves it. It doubles up the time on hot swap. And you'll see that in a test that I'm bringing up. I actually didn't use this seasonal mod. Bear in mind, I just used the base. Because I didn't want to use a seasonal mod, because this seasonal mod won't be here next season, right? Well, it might not be. So I didn't want to Im involve a test with a mod that's going to be gone. You understand? So, yeah, Hot Swap's a good origin trait. It's all right. It's not too bad. Uh, I wish it was a little bit better than what it was, but it, 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 it's all right. So now on to the uh, test that we're going to do. So coming up, there'll be some clips. So we'll do a test on damage between Fallen Guillotine and the other half, because they're both void, Fallen Guillotine's King of Swords, we know this. How close to damage is over half to Fallen Guillotine? I want to know how close they, they are. So we'll do a test with no specs, no taken spec, no boss spec, nothing like that. Because we're going to do it on Shira Chi uh, in the raid, in, in Last Wish, right? We, we, we use no loose and blade, no damage bonuses, nothing. Just their base, just the relentless strikes while win on both. Yeah? Which this has obviously sword, uh, sword Master's Guard, Jagged Edge, it's got that. Right? So it's very similar. So we'll see how that is. Then we'll also check um, what Enhanced Whirlwind Blade and Enhanced whirl, uh, Relentless Strikes does. Right? What's the differences between the two? Um... And just sort of go that way with it. But that's what I recommend that you craft on this sword anyway. So this will be the first DBS test between the other half and Fallen Guillotine on Kali. It's a 25 second damage window for each sword, so it's fair. Um, the only difference is that I use the Origin trade on this other half by damaging myself with a Pulse Grenade, then swapping, so I get a Hot Swap. Um, we end up hitting for light swings at max stack damage for, for Whirlwind Blade is 8,394. When you do a heavy attack with this sword, it hits for 4 hits at 5,072, which equals 20,288 in total for a heavy attack. Right? Notice we nearly got 6 heavy attacks off. It was nearly 6, but it was 5. Nearly 6 at the very end there. 428,000 in total we got for the other half. So that's respectable, right? So how close, this is what I wanted to know, how close is it to the king, which is Fallen Guillotine, right, for swords in general? So we'll do the same thing. The damage window is basically identical. The boss was identically went right, the same same uh, place. We're hitting the same number for light swing, 8394, but the heavy attack, noticeable, is different. Because he's hitting for six times at 5,246, which equals 31,476. So it's 11,000 more, roughly, than what the other half is on the heavy attack damage. Notice we only just got in five heavy attacks, as opposed to the other sword nearly got in six because of hot swap and stuff. Right? So there are differences, pros and cons. And notice my ammo. I had no ammo left on Fallen Guillotine. On the other half, I had some ammo left. This is just to prove I had no mods in and stuff. And the damage was a little bit higher than over half, but only a little bit. So they're, very, they're close. The next test is Enhanced Whirlwind Blade. So what is the difference? 
The difference is the other half with this enhanced whirlwind blade, it lingers. The, the the damage will linger for an extra second. It lasts for four seconds as opposed to three seconds. It's probably somewhere between half a second to a second increase. But I'm not here to test exactly, I'm just telling you roughly. Now I'll try with whirlwind blade. That's three seconds. So it's 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 less than what enhanced would be. Now this is the relentless strikes. So notice I can hit the boss slowly, a second between hits, and still get my ammo back. Can I do that with Fallen Guillotine? Now, it can't be more than two seconds though, notice, with the Enhanced, just a second between hits. I do the same, I'm not getting ammo back. So that's the difference between the two. I recommend that you just do standard Whirlwind, standard Relentless Strikes on the other half, really, to be honest. Uh, but that was the video on this, I so hope you enjoy, thank you.